since the previous year's advocacy efforts. Just last month, I believe on December 12th, the governor questioned the need for additional reports from state departments. Redesign our website with information about current long-term care trends and issues, thus requiring new and ongoing resources. All of these activities are new requirements. None of these activities are mandated activities as found in the Federal Older Americans Act. The committee's analysis of $50,000 in general fund costs only addresses the development of an advocacy plan. Other general fund costs are associated with the establishment of an advisory council, outside council, solicitation of funds, the redesign of our web, and the redesign of our website. We cannot use federal funds to pay for state mandates. While many of these activities are good practices, given the limited resources currently available and without new general fund okay. or in its absence, the redirection of funds from local assistance activities which support complaint investigations in long-term care facilities back to the state office, I cannot support this bill. These activities do nothing to assure the independence of the office, but rather make the state office beholden to additional responsibilities imposed by contractors and subcontractors. I strongly encourage you to oppose this bill, which would negatively affect the long-term care ombudsman program and our ability to serve residents of long-term care facilities throughout the state. Thank you for this opportunity to share my concerns and position. Carol Sewell from the California Commission on Aging. Um, the commission does not have a formal position. However, we have worked um, a number of years on issues related to funding the Ombudsman Office. We have great, um, great regard for the state ombudsman and the local ombudsman and the amazing work that they do on a very shoestring budget. Um, as you may remember, about three years ago, the budget was slashed in half when all of the general fund money was taken out of the ombudsman budget. There has been an effort over several years to restore money year at a time, and it was the work of Joe Rodriguez that actually finally made a change that at least increased them back to that 20% deficit from where they had been. Um, we, we endorse his work and we hope that this bill will not damage the efforts that he has made so far. Thank you. A any other testimony? Uh, you know, it would be helpful if uh, you were able to tell us what kind of changes you're able to make with the limited resources you have that might go towards satisfying <laughs> Senator Woke's concerns. I oh, think... Is, is a one-page website sufficient for millions of Californians? I believe our website has more than one page, okay. and there are many resources out there, very important consumer-driven resources that already exist that inform consumers on, on how they can get help. Our, our website explains the, the role of the long-term care ombudsman and how to access local ombudsman services that are available throughout the state. It's been my opinion that if legislation is needed to assure the independence of the state office, take the responsibilities and mandates of the state ombudsman that are found in the Older Americans Act and place those into state law. That way, there's no question about my ability to advocate and be an independent spokesman and advocate for residents. And that's not gonna cost one penny of general fund. Okay. Senator Kehoe. Uh, uh, I'll go to Senator Alquist, but we're not taking any more testimony. That was my question to you. And if any other members have questions, but Senator Alquist, I'll let you respond. Thank you, I would like to respond. First of all, the Advisory Council has been in law since the year 2000 and has never been implemented. This bill only establishes a start date of June 30th for that, of June 30th, 2013 for that to occur. My second point is that I just think the ombudsman protests too much. I mean, we're asking for some basic things with a, a booming aging population that you have measurable outcomes, that you update the website, and that you advocate independently on behalf of long-term care residents. Now, this is the next point is me speaking and not Senator Woke, and I was asked to speak today for Senator Woke. I was asked this morning to do it. What I would like to mention is that in 2008, before the budget cuts, I had a bill, SB 303, that required informed consent regarding psychotherapeutic drugs in nursing homes. 
uh, a bill that I would have thought the ombudsman would have been an advocate for, and nobody came uh, to testify on that. And I know that there are other bills uh, that other members could talk about. We're asking for some basic things. We understand that resources are not great, but the ombudsman should have some measurable outcomes. I ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator Alquist. Finance, do you have a file on this one? No, Madam Chair. All righty. Uh, you know, I, this is a, an important issue, uh, but time is extremely short. So, $190,000 long term. All righty. Thank you, Senator Patley. Any residents. other comments, members? And I just want to say that there was a report that was issued a little while ago, and two of the recommendations from the Office of Senate Research that looked at this thoroughly talked about ways to make this office even more effective. And would Thank you, Senator Pavley. And I appreciate the motion, and because of the short time, we'll just call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Walters? No. Walters, no. Alquest? Aye. Alquest, aye. Emerson? No. Emerson, no. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Price? Aye. Price, aye. Runner? Steinberg. Five to two, that is sufficient, but we'll leave the roll open for Senator Steinberg. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Next is SB 210 by Senator Hancock. There is no presentation on this bill. Is anyone in the audience opposed or supporting SB 210? Now's the time to make your testimony. SB 210, finance, do you have a comment on this one? No file, Madam Chair. That item goes to suspense without objection. Uh, next is Senator Huff's two items, SB 352 on uh, chiropractors. Are there, is there testimony in favor? Are you coming up for this one? All righty. Testimony in favor of SB 352 or opposition? Uh, this is uh, SB 352 by Senator Huff. Good afternoon, um, Madam Chair, members. I'm Robert Puglio. I'm the Executive Officer for the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. We're opposed to the bill. We believe this bill is unnecessary because we already have jurisdiction over the chiropractic scope of practice, which already prohibits, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, already prohibits chiropractors from exceeding their scope of practice or using lasers in an unsafe manner. Uh, we, we also feel this bill is unnecessary because we've been working with Senator Huff's office for quite some time on regulations, uh, which we just submitted to the Office of Administrative Law today, and um, those, those regulations will address uh, these concerns. The, the board and anything is, on the fiscal issues? Um, uh, no, just that we believe the expense of this bill and the um, going on the ballot is, is unnecessary because, or the bill is unnecessary. Thank you. Next, please. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Deborah Maddows for Southern California University of Health Sciences. We're opposed for the reasons previously stated. All righty. Um, members, uh, this, uh, there is some, uh, not a final decision from uh, the Legislative Council on whether or not it, this would require a, a ballot measure, so the costs of the bill are, uh, are wildly disparate at this point. I'd like it to go to suspense. Is there any objection to that? Uh, finance, do you have a comment on this bill? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. While we don't have an approved position, we would just note that there should be no fiscal impact to the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. As has been noted, uh, their jurisdiction to discipline chiropractors uh, already exists, so that is chiropractors who exceed their scope of practice. Thank you. Uh, then it goes to suspense and we'll deal with that on Thursday. Uh, next is SB 499 on redevelopment tax calculations. Uh, this is also by Senator Huff. SB 499, is there a testimony for or against this bill? Finance, do you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, we are uh, opposed to the bill. We believe that it would result in K through 12 schools losing approximately 3.9 million in Prop 98 general fund offsetting property tax revenues in 11-12. Any other comments, members, questions? Uh, no public testimony. Uh, the item goes to suspense. That was SB 499. Senator uh, Pavley, you're presenting very briefly on the timber harvest plans. I think SB 455, if there's if testimony, there's please come on up. Uh, work in progress. It had um, 
no no votes in committee because they understand that it'll be going back to committee this is a voluntary optional method to harvest timber in a watershed approach in exchange for a 20-year permit and a more robust uh, analysis i want to hit the fiscal issue um, it, it was raised in the analysis and i agree with the concern but i should point out in this bill that the applicants have agreed to pay a fee of up to a hundred thousand dollars for the more extensive, robust environmental review. I have with me the sponsors of the bill, uh, TNC and Pacific Forest Trust and others. Uh, thank you. The, uh, even with the $100,000 cost, so we, there's some doubt as to whether that would cover the cost of uh, the operation. So, uh, but it has important policy questions also. So let's go to your witnesses, then we'll hear from uh, for and against, and then we'll hear from finance. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Paul Mason with the Pacific Forest Trust, one of the sponsors of the bill. Um, just on the fiscal issues, as you noted, it is a candidate for suspense. We'd look forward to working with the committee staff on any amendments that may be necessary. We think it's an important policy bill and hope to keep it moving. Thank you. And members, I need, I need folks to stay because we have to do some claims bills. Okay. Um, Next. One more. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members. Pablo Garza with the Nature Conservancy. Also pleased to co-sponsor and uh, agree that we think it can result in long-term, or cost savings in the long term because of reduced regulatory review. Very good. More testimony. For or against? Come on up. All righty, go right ahead. You, sir. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee. I'm Brian Nowicki of the Center for Biological Diversity. The Center for Biological Diversity has taken a position of proposed unless amended, along with Forest Forever and Sierra Club California here today, um, based in no small part on the fiscal impacts of the bill. To be very brief, we are concerned that the $100,000 fee provided in the bill is not sufficient to cover the permit review and approval costs, let alone the costs of monitoring and administering the permit over the 20-year life of the permit. As you know, $100,000 is less than a single full-time equivalent and um, it, it comes out to about five cents per acre per year um, over the entirety of the covered lands. Uh, I understand it's not the intention of the bill to try to fix the giant funding hole that currently impairs the state's THP program, but it is of course also crucial that this voluntary option does not further diminish the state agency's already highly impaired capacities to provide environmental oversight to the THP program. At this point, Department of Fish and Game has already discontinued reviews of impacts of timber um, harvesting to uh, THPs throughout most of the state. Um, one option we have suggested is to charge the Board of Forestry with setting an application fee sufficient to cover the state's costs for all responsible agencies in approving and administering uh, the program. Uh, we'll continue to work with the author and sponsors regarding these and our policy concerns. Very Thank good, you. we'll go to the next witness. Um, Catherine Phillips, Sierra Club California, opposed and less amended, but we're working with the author and the author's staff to try to address some of the issues we're concerned about, including the cost, which we don't think is going to be covered by the $100,000. Thank you, next. Uh, Luke Bright, Forest Forever. Uh, we enjoin the Sierra Club California and the Center for Biological Diversity and uh, opposed and less amended. Thank you. Finan any other public testimony on this bill on uh, SB 455? Seeing none, finance. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have uh, no approved position at this point. However, we do share the concerns noted that we're unsure of how uh, sufficient the fee revenue would be to cover the costs of the All program. All right. Uh, then, unless there's objections, this item goes to suspense. Next is SB 485 by Senator Hernandez on health insurance. This is SB 485. He is not presenting. Is there public testimony on SB 485? So Come on up, Mr. Hicks. And <clears throat> tell us if you're for or against it. Randy Hicks of California for Disability Rights and Strong Support. In strong support. Okay. Any opposition? <clears throat> Seeing none. Members, on let's uh, finance. Do you have a comment on this? Uh, no file, Madam Chair. Then uh, that item 485 goes to suspense. Uh, next is <clears throat> Senator Steinberg's. Redevelopment bill, SB 654, SB 654, he is not presenting on this bill. Is there public testimony for or against? Seeing none, finance, do you have a comment on this? Uh, simply to note that the bill would result in uh, decreases of approximately 1.36 billion to 2 billion uh, in the amount of low mod housing. Uh, funds to be received by cities, county, special districts, and K through 14 schools by shifting low mod funds from taxing agencies to local housing authorities. 
Uh, any other comments, members, on this one? It's going to suspense. Without objection, then, uh, SB 654 goes to suspense. Next, also by Senator Steinberg, is SB 764 on telehealth systems. Uh, he is not presenting. We'll take public testimony, for or against. Um, we realize that the cost said that they, um, in the bill, it says in the analysis that it's unknown costs and unknown savings. We believe that the savings will be to the clients. <laughs> we also believe that in this bill that it's set up that the mechanism would make sure that's better care and better care down the line is also going to be more money saved to the state. So you're in favor? Very much thank, so. Thank We're you, very Mr. much Davis. in favor of this bill. Any other comments from the members? Finance, do you have a no file on this? Chair then uh, uh, that bill goes to suspense. That's SB 764. Senator Ted Lieu, do you want to present on picketing the funerals? This is SB 661. If there's testimony, come on up. We'll take brief testimony. Thank Senator you. Senator Lieu. Uh, this bill places reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on funeral protests. Uh, the bill passed legislated last year, got to the governor. He said he was tempted to sign it, but he thought it was unconstitutional. So we have amended the bill uh, in line with a veto message, reduced the buffer zone from 1,000 feet to 500 feet. We believe it's constitutional. Let me address the fiscal issue real quickly. Uh, there's 40 other states that have these laws. There's no evidence there's been a financial impact. There's no evidence that funeral protesters actually would violate these laws. If these laws were in place, that are the evidence in these other states show that they would actually comply with it. For those reasons, we think this has actually no fiscal costs and would love to have your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, this, uh, members, this could be a due pass. Uh, so I want to just yeah. make that clear. We'll take public testimony. Nice. Thank you very much. Dana Nickel, Pete Conantine Associates, representing the sponsors, AMVETS, American Legion, Vietnam Veterans of America, as well as the supporters, California Association of County Veterans Service Officers, Military Officers Association of America, and California State Commanders Veterans Council. Uh, as the Senator pointed out, this is done in 3,600 states. There won't be any cost. I move the bill. Thank you, Senator Alquist. And uh, I think that this will serve as a deterrent. That's the important thing. Currently, there's only one group actively protesting these funerals, and I think that this legislation will help stop Our, that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there other testimony for or against? Other testimony? Okay. Finance, do you have a comment no on this? No file, Madam Chair. Uh, members, we have a motion on this bill uh, by Senator Alquist, then the Secretary will call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Emerson? Emerson, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Price? We'll do it real quick. Thanks, Ted. Pavley? Runner? I already aye. Steinberg. And how many votes is that, Madam Secretary? Six to zero. Six to zero. So that's sufficient votes. We'll hold it open for Senator Steinberg. Members, we're going uh, back up to the top. Uh, I don't know which one's first. The claims bill? Which one? All right. We're, we'll, uh, Senator Walters, yeah. you're in charge. Oh, you'll have to do what I do. Ask yes, Bob. Okay, SB1. SB1. Here we go. State Racetrack Leasing Commission. Uh, this uh, Sounds like a removes the sunset date on the State Racetrack Leasing Commission, which is set to expire uh, January 1. Um, the, co the commission consists of six members. Uh, it's needed because the State Racetrack Leasing Commission is specifically cited in bond documents uh, at the Del Mar Racetrack. Uh, the uh, debt service for more than $50 million <coughs> in current bonds is some of the work that this commission performs. Uh, it, it, so we need the commission until 2025 when the bonded indebtedness is dispensed with. I ask for your I vote. And this is a due pass. Uh, witnesses in support? Anthony Gonsalves representing Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. We are in support of the bill. Thank you. All right. Witnesses in opposition? Uh, finance? Uh, no file, Madam Chair. And we, um, it's been moved by, I think, Senator Pavley. Call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Emerson? Aye. Emerson, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Price? Runner? Steinberg? And what's it? Six zero. And I, we're leaving it open for Senator Steinberg? Correct. Okay. Thank you, members. I appreciate the uh, support. Next is SB 730, which is our uh, state claims bill. 
Uh, this is sponsored by the Department of Justice. It appropriates $13 million from the general fund and the Department of Parks and Recreation to pay for specific claims. Um, there is a proposed amendment for an additional claim. Uh, and uh, Jessica DeVincenzi with the Department of Justice is here to answer any questions. Great. And no this, opposition. And this is a due pass as amended. I move the bill. Witnesses in support. Jessica DeVincenzi on behalf of the California Attorney General's Office in support, and we would ask for an aye vote. Uh, any witnesses in opposition? Uh, Department of Finance? No file on that matter. Okay, and I forgot who moved that bill. Uh, Senator Alquist, um, please call the roll. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Walters? Aye. Walters, aye. Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Emerson? Aye. Emerson, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Price? Runner? Steinberg? Six zero. We'll hold it open for Senator Steinberg. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And my last item is Senator Corbett's SB 708. Uh, she asked that I could present it. This bill extends the sunset date on a previous Senate bill at 1137, uh, which uh, Senator Corbett authored, uh, jointly authored in 2008. Uh, it'll add five years to the January 1st, uh, taking it up to January 1, 2018. Uh, this bill will help homeowners avoid foreclosure, allow tenants additional time to move from foreclosed properties, and allow neighborhoods to have fewer blighted buildings as a result of foreclosed properties. Extending the sunset date is critical uh, as many homeowners face significant hardships during the uh, current economic climate. Uh, special fund costs are minor and absorbable, received unanimous bipartisan support in two committees, and is uh, supported by Western Center on Law and Poverty, Consumer Federation of California, and the League of Cities. There's no known opposition members, and on behalf of Senator Corbett, I ask for your I vote. And this is a due pass, a witness is in support? Witnesses in opposition? Department of Finance? Thank you, Madam Chair. We concur with the findings that the bill would be uh, minor and absorbable in cost. All right. Do you have a motion? Move the bill. It's been moved by Senator Alquist. Uh, call the roll, please. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. Walters? Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Emerson? Aye. Emerson, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Price? Runner? Steinberg? Uh, five zero, and we'll hold it open for Senator Steinberg. Thank you, Mimi. Appreciate that. I'll, I'll wait here for Senator Steinberg. Members, that completes the file, right? Uh, members, we um, we've completed the file, and members, I should let you know. We don't have any uh, anything on call now except uh, for Senator Steinberg, so we can uh, we can adjourn and add to Senator Steinberg, or the reverse of that. Without objection, then we're adjourned.